This is Algebra 2, Chapter 4, Section 8, in which we will work with quadratic inequalities. Now, all of the things that we know about quadratic equations work for inequalities. The key is we're going to be graphing these things. And just like what we did with linear inequalities, where we graphed a line, decided solid or dotted, I wrote dashed here, but dotted, same thing. Then we picked a test point, and we found out if it was true or false, and we shaded the true. Okay. The same idea works here, except for there's one, one big difference. You have a parabola for, inequal for quadratic inequalities. So it won't be above or below the line. It won't be right or left of the line. It'll be inside the parabola or outside the parabola. And sometimes our favorite point isn't 0, 0. That's the other kind of big difference. Okay. We need to graph this thing. y is greater than x squared plus 2x plus 3. Okay. We could just randomly start picking x's and hope we got our parabola. Or we can play it smart. I'm going to pretend it's an equals. And I'm going to do complete the square so that I get it to vertex form like we did last time. Because vertex form is easiest way to graph. So we'll subtract the 3 over. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1, so we'll add 1 to both sides. Factor the right and combine on the left. And then bring the 2 over. Now we're ready to make our xy table. We know the vertex. Negative 1, 2. So then we pick two numbers above and two numbers below. And plug and chug. Negative 3 gives us 6. 1 will also give us 6. Negative 2 gives us 3. And 0 also gives us 3. 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 2, 0, 3, and 1, 6. Now, we've got our parabola. We need to decide solid or dotted. It's not equal to. So it's dotted. Beautiful job with the mouse here of making those little dotted lines. Okay. Now I need to pick a testing point. Since I'm in up here, this form, 0, 0 is a good point to pick. Okay, 0, 0 is definitely outside of the parabola. Plug it in. 0 is greater than 0 plus 0 plus 3. 0 is greater than 3 is false. So I'm going to shade not here. This was false. I'm going to shade inside. Okay. We could have also tested it down here. 0 greater than, remember this was greater than, 1 plus 2, 0 is greater than 3 is what we've gotten there too. So you can plug it in in either place and it's still good. Okay. Now here, we have another way we can solve these. If they don't have a y on it, we can pretend it's a y. Get the 0, get it over here to a 0. And then all we need to know is where is the graph, above the axis or below the axis. Okay. I'm not a big fan of this method, but it's in the standard, so we kind of have to do it. All right, 
We're going to do this by graphing, so we're going to play the complete the square game. Actually, we're not. We're going to play the uh, factoring game to get our x's. So we get our graph. We know the points are negative 4 to 2, or negative 4 and 2. And we know since this is positive, it opens up. I don't know exactly where. I don't care exactly how. I just know it opens up. Now, we're looking for places where this is less than zero. Well, the graph is less than zero. I'm going to change color here. The graph is less than zero from here all the way around to here. Right? It's below zero in this area. So we can report that in two different ways. We can say it's between negative 4 and 2 like this. Or you can use interval notation that says start at negative 4 and go to 2. And since this wasn't equal to, we put parentheses. Had this been an equal to, then it would have been brackets. Fun to write with a mouse, I tell you. I think you will probably be more comfortable sticking with that notation. But sometimes you'll see this, so I wanted you to have at least seen it. Okay. But I think, like I say, I think you'll probably want to stick to that. Now, to me, this isn't the best way to do this problem. But again, it's in the standard, so we have to do some that way. I think these kinds of things work better if you have a number line to work with. Okay. So I'm going to show you the number line method. First, you bring the 18 over to get it to 0, and we're going to pretend it's 0, equal. So we factored it, and we got values of 6 and negative 3 that we put on a number line. Now I put negative 3 to the left because it's the smaller value. 6 is the larger one, so it goes to the right. Now, I call this the plus and minus chart, and you'll see why in just a second. I'm going to bring my two factors and put them over here. Now, putting these points on the number line splits me into three groups. I have a group out here, less than negative 3. I have a group between negative 3 and 6. And then I have a group bigger than 6. I need to figure out what's going on in each of those three places. So I'm going to pick a number out here. And I'm going to pick negative 5. I can pick anything I want to out past negative 3. So I picked negative 5. Negative 5 minus 6 is negative 11. All I really care about is that it's negative. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Again, all I care is that it's negative. Now, we were multiplying those things together. Negative times negative is positive. So ultimately, the answer out here is a positive. And we'll talk about what that tells us in just a minute. Let's pick a number between negative 3 and 6. I like 0, because 0 is an easy number to work with. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. 0 plus 3 is positive 3. Negative times positive gives me a, a negative answer between here and here. And then pick any number out here. I'm going to pick 500. It's bigger than 6. I can pick it. 500 minus 6 is 494. Positive. 500 plus 3 is 503. Positive. Positive times positive is positive. 
Okay. Now here's where this comes in handy. We're looking for things where it was less than. Okay. When we brought the 18 over, we would have had less than zero here, less than or equal. Well, where is it negative? It's negative right there in this zone. Okay. That zone is the negative zone, not that part. Okay. Well, where is that zone? That zone is between negative 3 and 6. Or if we were to use the interval notation, it would be negative 3 to 6 with brackets because it was equal to. Okay. Had this said positive, then we would have been looking at this zone. Ooh, yellow doesn't show up very well. We would have been looking at this zone and this zone. So we would have said x less than or equal negative 3 and x greater than or equal 6. I shouldn't say and, I should say or because it's either one. Okay, had this been a positive, had this been greater than up here, then we would have written it like this. Okay, just so you see that notation. Again, well, because I've written on it. Well, at any rate, you have those. Um, if you had questions along the way with these three methods, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.